up guys I'm LQ this is the LQ review thank you so much for joining me here at my YouTube channel this is where I talk about all the geeky nerdy stuff that I love to talk about movies video games comic books TV shows and right now I'd like to talk about the Star Wars universe because after the in Disney investor meeting last week we've learned there's a lot of Star Wars content in the pipeline there's a lot coming in fact I counted 12 specific Star Wars projects that are currently being being uh, produced currently being made that includes movies and Disney Plus shows so I've taken those 12 properties and I have ranked them from least to most anticipated and I'm gonna start with the least at number 12 and I'm gonna work my way up to the most so what is my least anticipated out of those 12 properties to what is the most anticipated out of those 12 properties so without further ado let's dive right in to number 12 and number 12 is Star Wars visions Star Wars visions is going to be a Disney Plus series but my understanding is it's going to be animated and it's gonna be shorts so it's going to be, you know, not full episodes, just short stories told in animated form. It's going to kind of span, um, you know, the entire timeline of Star Wars. And, you know, I'm more of a long form story guy. I love my long form Star Wars stor storytelling. And, you know, I, I want it to be told that way. Um, the short stories, I'm, I'm just not getting excited about. And that doesn't mean they're not going to be good because they're, you know, they, they might very well be good but I'm just not, not getting excited about short stories told in the Star Wars universe. So it's my number 12. All right, number 11 is Star Wars The Bad Batch, the animated series. Now, I believe that some people might actually have this near the top of the list, but remember, I'm not a huge animation guy, and while, you know, I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time in the Clone Wars and Rebels uh, shows, Neither one of them really caught my attention and caught my love quite like the live action versions versions of Star Wars have. So Bad Batch might be great and it might be something that a lot of people are going to rally behind and love. And I'm sure that I'm going to watch it, but it's just not something that is high on my anticipation list, especially not when there's so many fantastic uh, opportunities for wonderful stories um, in the Star Wars universe right now because there's so much coming so so yeah Bad Batch is number 11 for me not saying it's gonna stink or not saying it's gonna be bad but it's just it's not it's not high on my anticipation list number 10 is Star Wars Acolyte uh, this is one that I think I probably know the least about but I do know it's gonna be told towards the end of the High Republic and it sounds like it's gonna involve the Sith both of those things have me excited. Um, now, whether or not it's going to be animated or live action, I don't think they've really come out. I don't think they've been clear on whether it's going to be animated or live action. But I put it ahead of the Bad Batch and ahead of Visions because at least it sound at least it's taking Star Wars into a new era. Again, I don't know a whole lot about what's happening in Acolyte, so it's hard to get really excited for something that I, I, I don't really know much about. But it's taking Star Wars to a new era that we haven't seen yet. So, Acolyte is number 10. Number 9 is Star Wars Lando, the Disney Plus series. Now, like Acolyte, we're not sure if it's going to be live action or, dis or uh, animated. I think it'll be live action. I think I can't imagine that they wouldn't that they would film a Lando series without um, without bringing in the actors from Solo. You know, I, I fully expect Han Solo to, to make an appearance in this show, and I just feel like uh, yeah, I feel like it'd be a wasted opportunity to if you're going to make a Lando show to not make it live action because they've already kind of established the world that Lando inhabits in Solo, a Star Wars story. So I'm a little more excited about this one. Uh, but I would, it would probably jump up probably two or three notches if I found out that it was live action, for sure that it was live action. Um, but since we're not sure, it kind of it's kind of tempering my excitement a bit. So Lando is number nine. All right, number eight is Star Wars A Droid Story. Now, I know that this one is animated, and I know what I've said about animation before, but I can't get over the fact that I love C-3PO and R2-D2. They're two of my favorite characters in Star Wars. I grew up with C-3PO C and R2-D2. I remember sitting at my parents' house when I was a little kid, putting in Star Wars, and for some reason, the droids 
are often the ones that I was most entertained by and the ones that I most identified with. It's funny the way that it works, that you know, the way that child children see things diff differently than adults do. But the droids were the ones that I really loved. And uh, so I got a lot of love for C-3PO and R2-D2. So even though it's animated, I'm I'm definitely curious to see what they're gonna what they're gonna bring uh bring to us in a droids show that's gonna be set in canon. You know we have a droids cartoon uh, that came out in the 80s, but that's not canon, and I don't know if it ever was. It's definitely not canon now, and uh, I would like to see a droid centric show in canon. They're gonna give us that in uh, a droid story. So let's check it out. Let's see if it's any good. You know I'm 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 more excited about that than some of this other stuff. And that's number eight. Number seven is Rangers of the New Republic, the Disney Plus series. We don't know a lot about this one. My guess is that uh, Cara Dune and Fennec are going to be kind of the the um, main players in this series. Now, it's possible that I'm entirely wrong and they, they're not in it at all. But I just feel like where the Mandalorian Season 2 is going, I really feel like uh, Cara Dune and Fennec are going to play a major role in this. But either way, it's going to be a New Republic story. Uh, it, you know, it's going to be a New Republic story that's probably going to be a prologue to the sequel series. It is going to be a prologue to the sequel series because um, it takes it takes place uh, in, in the same time as The Mandalorian does. So I'm excited about this one. I'm excited about seeing The Mandalorian and Ahsoka uh, shows cross over uh, with the Rangers of the New Republic show. I think there's a lot of opportunity for some really creative storytelling there. So that's my number seven, Rangers of the New Republic. Number six is Andor. Uh, I loved Rogue One. Loved it. It's, it's, today it's one of my top five Star Wars movies. I think Rogue One is great. Um, and Andor was a very, Cassian Andor was a very um, interesting character because he's so complicated. You know, he is a rebel who is fighting in a rebellion. He's been there for, you know, if not since the beginning, since close to the beginning, <clears throat> and he's operated as a spy. He is operated as somebody who's done some unsavory, unmoral things in the name of rebellion. And that's what interests me about the character is the gray area that he inhabits. He is not out to do good and nothing but good. He's out to advance the cause of a rebellion. You know, it, now we, we know that he's fighting for good because we know what's going on. We know the whole story of Star Wars. But there are some in the Star Wars universe that would probably refer to him as a terrorist because of how because of the tactics that he uses to fight the empire so it's a very interesting uh dynamic and i i'm definitely excited about seeing that explored so andor is my number six number five is ahsoka number five is ahsoka now again i was never really a huge clone wars or rebels guy and ahsoka obviously played a huge part in those shows but what I am is a Jedi guy. I love stories about the Jedi. I love stories about the Force. I love lightsaber action. And I think we're going to get all that in Ahsoka. I think it's going to expand the Jedi lore. I think it's going to expand, um, you know, the our understanding of what it means to be a Jedi and Jedi in the Star Wars universe and what it means to use the Force in the Star Wars universe. And since it's Ahsoka, I also think we're going to get some cool lightsaber play. So all that has me really excited about this. And again, it, it inhabits the same space as Rangers of the New Republic and the Mandalorian. And we're going to see crossovers and we're going to see um, st compli more, more complicated storytelling, which for me is a wonderful thing. So Ahsoka, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's my number five. Number four. Number four is we don't have a title for it yet. It is the Taika Waititi directed Star Wars movie. We don't know anything about this at all, but we know Taika Waititi is writing and directing Star Wars, and that's enough for me. The work that he's done uh, has really earned him the opportunity to tell a Star Wars story. Between, um, between Thor Ragnarok, uh, between his work that he did in The Mandalorian Season 1, and gosh, guys, Jojo Rabbit is an amazing movie. And, uh, and you know, obviously Taika Waititi's done some other stuff, but, you know, specifically talking about the Mandalorian and Thor, he's ready to take on a, uh, a Star Wars movie. And I can't wait to see what his sensibilities, what his uh, comedic style, what his storytelling style, you know, what kind of movie are we going to get what kind of Star Wars movie are we going to get with him at the helm? I'm excited about it. So that's my number four. 
Number three, the third Star Wars property that I'm most looking forward to is The Mandalorian Season 3. Guys, Mandalorian Season 2 has been phenomenal. I've liked it more than Season 1, and I didn't think that that would be possible, but I have. The Mandalorian Season 2 has just been running on all cylinders and has been just a joy to watch. And my, you know, we don't really know how it's going to end yet. The uh, final episode of Season 2 comes on on Friday, and clearly, you know, it's not Friday yet, it's Monday. Um, but whatever they do in the finale, we know Season 3 is coming and I'm excited for it. With Jon Favreau show running this uh, this show, I'm really excited to see what they have in store. We have a great character that's been established. We have wonderful supporting characters. We've got Baby Yoda, and uh, and, and we've got a timeline here where we are coming into direct conflict with with the Empire. So, which as we know, soon becomes the First Order. So. Lots of great stuff going on in The Mandalorian, and I can't wait to see how they continue it starting on Christmas Day in 2021 with The Mandalorian Season 3. All right, top two. Number two is the Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series. This is really exciting me. Uh, you know, the idea that we're getting Hayden Christensen back to play Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. This take, takes place 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. Darth Vader is going to be out there hunting Jedi. Specifically in this, he'll probably be hunting Obi-Wan. Um, now, some people say this goes against canon, where Obi-Wan and Vader are going to face each other in this. I don't think so. I don't think it does. It's never. It, it was never... It, implicitly stated in A New Hope that the last time they faced each other was on uh, Mustafar. All we knew was that it had been a long time since they'd faced each other. And uh, and maybe this is that long time ago. That, that you know, the, the 20 years... It, this will still be 20 years before they see each other again. Um, so maybe this is it. So, um, yeah... Well, would it be 20 years? No, it'd probably be about 10 years before they see each other again, wouldn't it? Yeah, about 10 years. Um, but yeah, this is something that I'm... I'm st Still, 10 years is a long time. Uh, but I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about it. How are they going to have Obi-Wan evade Vader? A and this is a story that is going to be deeply personal for Obi-Wan. And it's also a story that I believe is going to have a lot of flashbacks. They're not going to cast Hayden Christensen just to be in the costume. Um, especially since it's not going to be his voice. You know, hopefully they get James Earl Jones back. And if they don't, hopefully it's somebody who sounds a lot like him. But they're not going to cast him just to be in the costume. I believe there's going to be a lot of flashbacks. And I believe this is something that's probably going to strengthen the prequel trilogy. Uh, we've had a lot of content that's made the prequel trilogy better. Obviously, the Clone Wars has made the prequel trilogy better. Um, I, and I believe wholeheartedly we're going to get a lot of flashbacks in here that really explores the relationship between Obi-Wan and Anakin that's going to make the prequel trilogy better. So I'm... I'm excited about this. I'm excited. The only reason, the only reason this is not my most excited, the property I'm most excited about is because Patty Jenkins is directing Rogue Squadron. Oh, that's, that's, so that's my most anticipated. Number one is Rogue Squadron. Patty Jenkins is a phenomenal filmmaker. She has a deeply personal story about her dad that makes her passionate about telling this story. And, um, and who doesn't love Rogue Squadron? Now, some people are saying this this will be taking place in the same time period as, as the original trilogy. Didn't Kathleen Kennedy say during the press, uh, during this, um, the uh, uh, investors meeting, though, that this takes place in a new era of Star Wars? Does that mean that it's going to be moving forward and that the Rogue Squadron is going to be part of the New Republic? I don't know. Frankly, I would rather... Rogue Squadron be told after the sequel trilogy. I, I would rather this be the first story to be told after the sequel trilogy. That's my preference. Let's move past the sequel trilogy now and explore Star Wars after the sequel trilogy. That's my preference. That, I, that's what I hope she does with Rogue Squadron. I don't think she will. I think it's going to be during the original trilogy. I hope it's not. I just feel like I feel like that's too safe. I feel like it's been overdone. How many stories do we need to be told in that time era? 
Let's get away from that time era. Let's let's explore a new time period that moves forward. Even the High Republic moves backwards. Let's move forward past the sequel trilogy. That's what I want to see. But either way, I'm super excited about it. Patty Jenkins is a great director. I love the Rogue Squadron uh, stories and video games, the books and video games, and uh, and I just love the idea of a story being that focuses on an X-wing squadron. I think that's wonderful. So that is my number one that I'm most looking forward to is Rogue Squadron. So out of all the uh, Star Wars properties that are in, in work right now, in development, which one are you most looking forward to? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear, hear your take on it and I'd love to have a conversation about it. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you so much for joining me here at the LQ Review where we get to talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we'd love to talk about. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.